the third question, is this going to be like 2008 and, and this you know, housing collapse all over again? I want to run through a few quick graphs. I, I think we talked about these last time, a couple of edits, a couple of updates to those so that we can, can really bring the visual component to simply and effectively see differences uh, in today's market versus back then. First one is home price appreciation. You can see here on this graph, the left is the six years leading up to the crash, uh, the right, the six years leading up to today. And just visually, you can tell there's a big difference. Uh, leading up to 2008, the, the housing crash, we had uh, what I would call runaway appreciation. And, and you know what happens there? It's like a runaway train. It's not gonna end anything. It's not gonna end up good. Um, and what we have today, or what we've seen leading up to today, while we have appreciation, we don't have it to the level uh, that we had back then. So, so important to, to remember with regard to appreciation. Um, the second one, I'll fly by this pretty quick, quickly, the Mortgage Bankers Association Mortgage Credit Availability Index. Um, if there's anybody that knows uh, the availability of credit and the situation with that today, it's everybody on this call. And the higher this index, the easier it is to get a loan. So we can see back in the housing bubble when we know in our business is very easy. Uh, to obtain financing, then we had this pendulum swing that made it much harder to, to, harder to uh, obtain financing. Guidelines got harder, self-employed got higher, harder, all the things we know about our business. And we've largely stayed there in a lot of places. And we even know today, right now, that credit is, you know, is constricting as well um, in, in a lot of places for people to obtain financing. The next big piece that we want to look at, and this is an update to I think what we talked about last time, are uh, the months of inventory on, on the market uh, today versus back then. And this, this, this graph does such a good uh, example just visually to get it. And if we kind of take this neutral market or six, seven month window as a neutral market and we compare last, uh, you know, last recession in 2008 to today's market, we know that we had a significant oversupply of homes on the market uh, in 2008, which led to a lot of the problems that we faced as an industry and, and really as a, as a country. And what do we know about today? Many in the real estate business, certainly uh, buying and selling real estate, the biggest challenge they uh, face are literally the number of homes on the market, an undersupply of homes for the number of people that want to buy them largely across the country. Now that's going to vary by, Market to market and by price point, I know that. Um, but this is, a, this is a stark difference that I don't wanna just, just fly past in the difference between where, we at, where we're at today as an industry to, to where we uh, you know, were back then. The next piece here, we talked about this last time, the total number of equity cash outs, you know, cash out refinances done the three years prior uh, to 2008 and the, to the three years prior to today. And what we know is leading up to, to 2008, we had $824 billion done as cash out refis. And the interesting thing I'll, I'll tell you about this leading up to today, the total of the last three years does not even equal or exceed the total of one year leading up to 2008. Significantly different in how consumers are handling equity in their homes today versus back then. And, and I think it's fair to say there are a lot of people that learned a lot of lessons about equity back then that they don't want to repeat. Let me take a quick break here. Speaking to the way that, uh, that, that folks are treating uh, their homes right now. So the next piece, and I've updated this slide as well, when you start to talk about uh, wealth in this country, this is significant. 53.8% of all homes in America have at least 50% equity. Uh, we know, you can see on here that 37% of the homes in this country are owned free and clear. Uh, we then take the balance of that that do have a mortgage. And the, when you take the portion that has 50% equity, you come with that 53.8% number. We also know the average equity of a home with a mortgage on it is $177,000 today. And so when we saw the situation where people were walking away from homes where they literally owed more on them than they were worth in 2008. By and large, we don't have that scenario today. We have a lot of equity in homes across this country. 